It's a learning process. We're here to learn. We're here to learn and I'm here to make the mistakes for you. Here you change it and then oh, you hold my. it. <laughs> that changed my life, like even for sunsets. <laughs> wow, okay, cheers. cheers. Almond latte, almond magic. Oh, that's good. Mm, I'm telling you, good coffee, and especially for Geelong. Go Geelong, mm. yum. Let's go for a drive, and then when we get home, I'm gonna try. Another pizza dough recipe for tomorrow. I'm gonna be here for pizza. For tomorrow. Night. I'm gonna be Not here today. for pizza night. <laughs> That's my favorite croissant in this country. Really? Mm. Listen, it's delicious, but I'm gonna be a bit critical. And it's a little dense. It's not as flaky as other I like that. croissants that I've had. Half of my croissant ends up on the floor. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is just a bit of a mix of things that I've been doing over the weekend. But most importantly, it's about Mastering Pizza by Mark Vetri. I've been reading this during the week and I have been so excited to try one of the recipes. What I like about this book is that Mark provides recipes that are suitable for home ovens as well as wood-fired ovens or pizza ovens. So he adjusts the dough recipes as well as explains why he's making these adjustments and why certain recipes work better in home ovens whereas others work better in wood-fired ovens. So the first dough recipe that I'm going to be trying from this book is a Roman dough at 67% hydration. I'm not gonna lie, I've already messed up, but maybe I haven't. The recipe calls for bread flour, but I had a lot of double O flour in my pantry, which is usually perfect for pasta and pizza making. I just decided that it should be okay to use double O flour, but each bread recipe, each dough recipe calls for a different type of flour, different percentage of water, depending on what it is that you're trying to achieve. So I should have used bread flour. If you're wondering what the difference is between these two flours, bread flour is really high in gluten and so is double O flour. Double O in double O flour is in reference to how finely this flour is milled. Basically been milled to a very fine powder similar to baby powder that's super fine and it can absorb moisture really really well so double O flour doesn't necessarily mean that it's high in gluten just like any other flour it can have varying levels of gluten <laughs> it's a learning process we're here to learn I'm here to make the mistakes for you so the first dough recipe that I'm going to be trying from this book is a Roman dough at 67% hydration. Because my home oven can't reach the temperature of a pizza oven or a wood fire oven, to prevent drying out the dough too much and forming like a really biscuity crumb, you've got to increase the hydration. So essentially having more water in the dough is going to help form a more open crumb, give you that chewy crispy crust. I'll leave the recipe down below. I've got everything. 15 degrees. So the recipe says to put flour, sugar, water and oil in the bowl of a stand mixer, fresh or dry yeast. I was using dry yeast. Now I don't have a stand mixer so we used a glass bowl and a handheld dough mixer. So I mixed on low speed until everything was combined for about 4 minutes and then I added salt and kept on mixing until the dough was soft, stretchy and somewhat resilient when poked. Another 3 minutes. I don't think I mixed my dough well, long enough to form enough gluten. Now, this was a really sticky dough. Mark Vetri advises not to put any flour on the surface, so I did not. My favorite sentence from this book is Handle it with authority. That's what I'm gonna do. Who's the man? I divided my dough into five dough balls, each one weighing around 250 grams. 
And then here came the shaping process. Mark Vetri tells me to drag my dough ball across the bench using a scraper to form surface tension. I usually use my hands, so this was a bit difficult, just a bit, I don't know, a bit awkward. It forms like a very overly shape, which he refers to in the book, so I thought I was doing the right thing. But then I felt like I wanted to use my hands and I wanted to get some more surface tension using my hands, and that's what I did. How much water did we apply to this? This one is 67% hydration. It's so hard. I transferred the dough balls to a Tupperware and cover them and put them in the fridge overnight. I like that it has a long fermentation time. It says to ferment it in the fridge for 24 hours or up to three days. 12 bottles of wine. <laughs> Here's what happened. My mom, sister and I spent a decent amount of money on adorebeauty.com. That's where we get most of our skincare products. And in return, they sent us this $100 wine voucher from Naked Wines. This is the first time that I ordered from Angel Wines. There is a bit of a catch. You've got to spend a certain amount of money to be able to get the $100 off. I ended up choosing, it's a mixed wine case. So I got a mix of white wines and red wine. I really liked Naked Wines concept. They support Australian and New Zealand independent winemakers. And so I thought I'd just share that with you guys. So I got the mixed wine case, red and white wines. And I think I paid about $70. Also with these 12 bottles of wine, I also got another $100 wine voucher. So for the next time I feel like some more wine. All right, now back to the pizza. Mm. Come, Jazzy. Come. When's the next pizza night? Tomorrow. Today. Next week. Need to have another pizza night. One more.